Welcome. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm going to talk, and when I say talk, and I'm like mostly going to rant, and perhaps ramble as well, about what well, large platform architecture in Perl. Um, so this is a remix of a talk in Inside Polo about three weeks ago. Um, I took out all the good bits that people liked, uh, and then some really boring bits, um, so that I can go to the Nova. And, and yeah, I, I'm a programmer, uh, and you might have met a programmer too before, I'm not very good at diagrams, sorry about that. Um, so, what I do for a living is, is they pay me what the music industry pays me to write code. What? what? I don't work for Sony or for, for the other two companies that make music. How does that work? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm in London, so I'm good friends with a lot of the last of them guys, and one of the, their, their dev managers said to me, we keep, no, we keep losing less money. <laughs> Um, direct quotes. Uh, so, so yeah. How do you make money from music? Um, well, actually, what do you do? Um, and so, um, I want to try to think about how that works for us. Um, and, and really, yeah. What's so, so music? Um, you have files. That you need to send them to music services like iTunes and Napster and, and several hundred other music services that um, you know do classical music. Uh, there are some very specialised people so And if you're a small label, you need to send yourself to all of these people and get some money uh, and aggregate sales reports back. And if you're a label that has one person working for you, then the technology to do that is so way beyond you. Um, so they call you to help. So this basically involves being S3 on cheap. Um, on really, 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 really cheap. Um, because I have blood files, and my blood files are getting really big, and then you store these two volumes of every blood file. And it has code to the blood files to MP3s and WMAs and AACs, and, and so when you store two copies of every blood file, and a million different things, and then again, yeah, trying to collect these several different rights. Um, I, I mean, some of that is copies of stuff, but, but, but like, I have a large storage computer. Um, and yeah, you need to be able to give several hundred terabytes to people very fast. Uh, I mean, when the new Vampire Weekend video goes up, then you're going to be doing 3,000 gigs a second for something that is several gigs. Um, and that's a lot of media storage. Um, you know, when you start thinking about how many gigs a second, yeah, I'll stop now. Um, we're not as big as iPlayer, but they use a comp. <laughs> so, you know. Um, okay, so we run MobileFS. Who has heard of MobileFS? Who, who is using MobileFS? Awesome. Who, who, who is kind of thinking that MobileFS might be interested to use? Okay, it's fairly great. I mean, the last few releases um, have made a lot of bad things better. Um, <coughs> it works quite well, especially if you're live journal. And uh, when I say if you're live journal, I mean scrapbook and photo hosting, like assets that are say a meg or maybe two megs max, work really well. When you stuff a hundred of your like video in it, it, it works much less well. Um, so that sort of stuff is kind of being fixed. Um, I, I mean, I think I think the number of files um, I have a very small MobileFS installation because all of my files, you know, start up. 10 megs or so, rather than a few hundred k. Um, but yeah, it works well enough. Um, so, it's data center design. Um, so, so, I have all these machines with all these spinning disks. Um, <coughs> just what the flying fuck? I, I asked for a new rack, and they said you could have 8 amp rack. And I said, well, so, okay, I can put 10 machines and, and buy some really expensive pair. What? Just what? I, I, yeah, okay. Um, I may be using new data center or but either way, um, electricity is way more expensive than servers. <coughs> when my servers get 18 months old, uh, I just take them out and throw them away because buying a new server will pay for itself in electricity because the kit gets that much more dense. And that's before I've even thought about the disks get bigger at the top. So, so we, we just throw servers away because um, it's cheaper. Um, <laughs> transit is really, really, really expensive thing to just across the internet. Um, so actually, it's much, much cheaper to buy it fiber and pills um, when you when you do this on any form of reason scale. Um, so so let's let's talk about serving media to people quickly. Um, so this is my entire platform. This is very 
Well, the diagram view of my entire platform. Um, so we have ah, and not working this one. Um, we have Bonish, um, and we have Apache, and actual applications, uh, and then I have all of this Nginx and this stuff to serve people files, which is a little bit more about than you go. Um, and they've got a million machines just with disks in them. So, so you spend a few more pounds, you get a million RAM in those machines, and they're entirely I.O. swamped, but their CPU is doing nothing except pushing bytes. So actually, you can kind of reuse the CPUs to do other things. Um, and, and, yeah, let's not talk about MySQL. Um, I'm just trying to point to about MySQL, except for the boss is talking about MySQL. Um, okay, so, um, Perhaps in terms of Apache, which is kind of mostly pissed off for raisins, but you know, Apache is fine. Um, we move most of the apps out of North Pearl and into Fast CGI, because that means that I can restart things independently and I can spin up a copy on local sockets running NYT prof and, and all of these other nice not being more Pearl properties that Fast CGI has. Um, and so the application runs on port 81 basically, um, and we've got Varnish on port 80. Which just proxies and we do ESI. Who knows what ESI means? Nobody. Excellent. Um, I do. Good. Good. You can tell us. It stands for Edge Site, which means that you put together different contents on the topmost level. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so, so I have this thing called Varnish uh, and it does some requests and then it glues crap together and serves your web page. Um, so I have one varnish on each host um, and each varnish talks to all the web servers on all the other hosts. Um, and so if one of my web servers is actually struggling, then it gets removed from the pool. But I try not I try not get my web servers to a point where they're so ill that they can't send bytes from A to B, even if they're, they're kind of blocked out. Um, so we actually just do DNS round robin, one virtual IP per host, uh, and that means that if, if one host fails, then it's like it gets taken over by something. And if one host is slow, I'm hoping the slowness is at that layer, but uh, the bunch can still cope. Um, and actually, that, that works <coughs> pretty well for me. Um, I, I mean, as long as you don't have max clients by thousands, um, at where max clients it is a hundred meg more per whole process, then it, then it looks like a game. Um, so, yeah, Varnish does some caching, it does the ESI, but it doesn't cache any files. Um, and there's no point in sending them straight through. Um, so, file serving, uh, the, the way this works is that Varnish does some high availability, it proxies through to Nginx, um, which then hits my catalyst fastage application. Which doesn't look up, says, oh, okay, you can have this file. <coughs> because, I mean, we do a lot of paid for downloads, which means that we're going to have one user to arrive to be able to download this album and stuff. Um, so, so there is quite a lot of complexity to the access controls. But once the access control is done, I serve a 200 OK with an XXL redirect header, and I have some C code that talks to whichever machine has, whichever machine is spinning this on the back end, has the actual file and proxies it through. Um, because my, my Catalyst and Moose app is, could, could do better things than sit in a while loop sending bytes. Because, um, yeah, that's kind of expensive using 100 megs of RAM, 80 megs of RAM, or whatever, to, to do a while loop going read, write, read, write. So, so don't do that. Um, okay, so going back to the picture. Um, so, so this, I talked about, that's the app stack, um, yeah, the ESI is here, and then, then we have this um, and Nginx and some Russian guy whose name I entirely can't remember wrote a C extension to Nginx um, that talks to the mobile FS and it finds which one of the machines has the thing and, and it just orders to the Nginx layer. Um, I've got some custom patches on that that I keep saying we push and get integrated and I keep failing at. Um, okay, um, so storage architecture. Um, that's, so that's in the bottom, I've talked about just a bit. Um, lots of boxes, lots and lots of boxes, lots of disks. They're generally not doing anything but I.O. Um, so I have all of these other services that I kind of need in my platform. Um, and, and so I just 
put Memcache on one of them, VMware on one of them, and Soap Server on one of them, etc. And as long as I keep all of these things in a way so that machines can fail, but I have a backup proof as long as everything works, then, then the fact I have a big pile of boxes means they fail fairly regularly. But, but the, everything on here is also on here, and all of these services are on several nodes, and, and so my architecture is such that any of these nodes can fail, and they do fail fairly regularly, I mean like several a week um, failing. Um, <laughs> and quite often that, that's, you can go and kick it a bit or fix a disk, and it's okay. And sometimes it dies. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that works pretty well. Um, okay, uh, in there. Bar files, let's like, talk about something I really quite hate, um, because, because I haven't done enough hating yet. Bar files, bar well, is a container format, and that, that basically means that there's, there's a vague specification for how you can put stuff in stuff. But yes, you can put XML documents in bar files. <coughs> Seriously, um, I have labs that are, are for pregnant ladies for relaxation. There's a whale song, and they have an XML fragment embedded in them which has a geodata for where this whale song was occurred. <laughs> 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 no, I can shoot you not. My files with XML in them happens. Uh, uh, not, not just randomly, actually with real data in um, Hi, the flak encoder, specifically if you're making flax uh, and you try stubbing your bar file that it doesn't specifically like, it will crack everywhere. So, so talking about my storage problems, well, actually, I have the wire files that customers send me <laughs> and the web files that, that will actually work and have a whole process for cleaning them up and smashing them in various ways. Um, also, audio software is amazing. When I say amazing, I mean every single different type of professional audio software managed to do well entirely differently. <laughs> and that has a different definition of amazing there we have so that. Um, so yeah, I transcode everything. And how this involves doing the game. All the other magic, not other fun things. Again, I have a different definition of fun for everybody else. Again, sorry about that. Um, <coughs> which means I need Windows 2. I like Windows 2. Um, yeah, we're running out of state. Um, we're running really horrible old out of state, and Windows XP is great. In VMware, I've got an image of someone built years ago that still works, and nobody wants to actually script decent Windows deployment. Um, so we have some pull ring on there with an old active stay in 5.86 or something and as thin as possible, no access, no libraries, no, no, well, okay, we have some libraries that copy into a directory in the scripts, um, but, but it's got to be as thin as possible, because I, I just, yeah, I just, just don't deal with that, possibly like that. Um, so, so how does this work? Um, so we have all of these mobile affairs storage machines, which are basically just HTTP nodes. Um, uh, we have a machine, and this might be a VMware, it might be a real machine, it's an encoder. Uh, and so we run a few scripts on it. We run a downloader, an uploader, and an encoder, and um, well that's it. And so the downloader asks a soap service, give me some stuff, and you get a list of URIs back, and then it retrieves those URIs and stuffs them on disk, um, and stuffs a little bit of metadata on disk. The encoder picks those up, does something with the metadata, um, and, and the image as well, because I mean a lot of MP3s embed the image for the file inside them and, and you know, tags and various other stuff. Um, and we squirt these MP3s that will be amazing to have out on disk, um, and then there's a process here that comes and does an HTTP port and another set request to say, okay, I finished this, I've put it, check that it's right. Yeah. Um, and, and so we have something else that's not on this diagram and then goes and gets that again and SHA wants it and, and checks that this wasn't entirely made of locks, basically. Um, well, there's also a the hardware isn't um, and the reason this is split into a load of processes is that things work 